How's it going everybody? You're at the Ferris for Fitness YouTube channel and today I'm going to be discussing the glycemic index. If you've already, if you followed a whole bunch of different YouTube channels, you might have seen this video previously on Lifting for Life channel by Ian McCarthy. It's just kind of bad timing so if you've already seen that video, this is going to kind of be redundant to you. Um, he has a lot of good information. I wouldn't recommend a lot of YouTube channels to other people. But this is definitely a very good video and mine's going to be very similar to that like I said. So if you've already seen that video, this may not be of a great importance to you. But I am going to be discussing the glycemic index, uh, kind of my take on it, uh, the, again the science behind it. And again, if there's any practical use for people, just to help people out, just to make nutrition easier. That's what I'm pretty much trying to do through YouTube is just make uh, nutrition and exercise easier for people so they can see results. So to get started, what the glycemic index is, is pretty simple. It's just a way that they tested foods out to see how it affected your blood sugar. They only tested carbohydrates because those have the greatest effect on your on blood sugar. You could also um, raise your blood sugar by eating protein and fats, but again, it's not as dramatic, so they only tested carbohydrates. So again, anytime you're ingesting a carbohydrate, it's going to spike your blood sugar after you, after you digest it. And they had it in three different categories, 55 and under, I believe was low. And some, some examples I have for that would be carrots and apples. So they're saying that those would be, you know, good carbs to eat because they're, they're low in the glycemic index. Therefore, they wouldn't produce a greater, they'd produce the least amount of, of increase in your blood sugar. Okay, then the second little, um, the second level they had was the medium range, which is 56 to 69. And then 70 and above would be high. Examples of those are like white rice, white bread, pretty much any simple carb you've heard of, you know, Gatorade, stuff like that. So those, that's how they measured it. And I'll tell you the, the biggest reason why how they measured it really isn't practical for, for anyone. There's three, uh, I'm going to point out at least three major problems with the glycemic index. The first one is the, the way they tested these foods were in isolation. I think that's the, the biggest Thing that went wrong. People typically don't eat foods in isolation. You know, you could argue that, you know, some people just have pop tarts for breakfast or something like that. But majority of the time when people consume food, they're going to have, you know, white rice with a protein or they're going to have, you know, pop tarts and oatmeal and a shake or something. I would say 90% of meals have a mix between macronutrients of fats, of carbs, of protein or something like that. So once you alter foods, once you put a protein with that carbohydrate or fat with that carbohydrate, it severely alters how you're going to absorb it and how fast or slow your blood sugar is going to uh, spike. Uh, the second problem is they did this with um, fasted subjects. Fasted just refers to not having food or any calories for at least eight hours. Again, that's really not practical for most people. Maybe it would be practical for people at you know breakfast, but again, at breakfast, you typically consume more than just carbohydrates. So, again, that's the way it was tested. And that's the way they found out how these foods have affected your blood sugar. So, it's not the same when you're eating lunch or when you're eating dinner. It's just, it's really not relevant when you already have food in your system or if you've had food in your system for even, you know, five or six hours. The, the third part of it is they don't take into account how much of the food you ate. So, it kind of... It goes back to the, the moderation that a lot of people preach about and that a lot of people just don't understand. And it creates kind of a stigma with certain foods as being bad foods. And they're not really taking in into consideration how much of this food you're eating. You know, are, are, I wouldn't say Pop-Tarts are an unhealthy food. You can't really say that. You have to examine an entire diet. You could make a good argument for Pop-Tarts not being a micronutrient-dense food. That would make sense, but... If you're saying that someone's eating 3,000 calories and they're, they're meeting all their micronutrient needs and they're, you know, they're staying around their, their fat and their carbs and their protein is where it needs to be and you know, they have a, a Pop-Tart instead of some oatmeal, like one Pop-Tart instead of some oatmeal and again, all their micros are, are met, it's not going to make that big of a difference. You know, the timing, again, this, is, this glycemic index is where a lot of the, the insulin, the post-workout and the timing thing kind of came from. It's just not relevant. I'm not saying that micronutrients don't need to be met, but I am saying once you've gotten to a certain level of micronutrients, pounding more and more, you know, like 800,000% of your vitamin C isn't doing any more for you than, you know, 
500% of your daily value of vitamin C. So that's a, that's a good kind of take home message for, for people about the glycemic index. You don't have to eat complex carbohydrates all day long. Um, here's a few other things I want to talk about. Just kind of another, even if you could argue the whole, you know, um, it, I kind of put those three arguments out there why it's really not relevant um, for anyone. Again, fasted state, typically you don't eat in a fasted state. Secondly, you typically are consuming carbohydrates with other macronutrients. And third was the, it's not taking in the amount. Obviously, the greater amount of the carbohydrates you eat at one time, if it was in isolation, if it was fasted, obviously, the greater effect it would have. So those are the three main parts. And again, there's just some the other information I found is that it, it kind of creates a, again, the I'm reading a book right now called The Dieter's Paradox, which I'll probably do a review on and just tell some people about, but creating an unhealthy relationship with food. And one example is uh, potato chips and ice cream are considered low glycemic index carbs. So if you follow this kind of low glycemic index trend and you're saying, well, as long as I eat low glycemic index foods, I don't have to count calories or count macros or anything. I'll be fine. I'll lose weight. I'll be healthy, whatever. And those are two foods that are considered low glycemic index and they're obviously high in fat, high in calorie. So if you're not counting your calories, you're probably over consuming your total calories for eating those on a consistent basis. And again, it kind of puts some, some foods that shouldn't be considered, you know, bad or unhealthy, such as, you know, watermelon has a really high, um, glycemic index. So people might be, you know, shy away from foods like that, even though there's plenty of micronutrients in watermelon. So if as long as it fits into your diet, there's nothing wrong with consuming it. And lastly, um, even the American Diabetes Association came out um, with a quote saying it's more the amount of carbohydrate of the amount of carbohydrates that you consume is going to affect your blood glucose, your blood sugar, whatever you want to call it. It's the amount that is more important than the actual glycemic index of those carbs. So. Even for people who are supposed to be following this, you know, if you have a healthy insulin response, you definitely really don't need to care about, you definitely don't need to follow the glycemic index. But for people with diabetes who have, who have trouble um, with insulin resistance, I'm not a huge, I'm not an expert at all, but I'm definitely not uh, fairly educated on diabetes. But I do know they do have problem with insulin resistance, so it could be useful for them. But again, all those factors still come into play, fasted, other foods, portion size, but even the people who you would think would be the most supporting of the glycemic index have came out and said it's more of the amount of carbohydrates that you're consuming throughout the entire day than it is the actual glycemic load. Uh, so I think that is it, guys. I might have missed a few things. But again, just to wrap it up real quick, advocates of this will tell you that you need to eat low glycemic index carbs, A, to prevent insulin spikes, which isn't going to matter at the end of the day. As long as your you know maintenance calories are below, you're gonna lose. If, if you're below your maintenance calories, you're gonna lose weight. If you're above your maintenance calories, you're gonna gain weight. It's as simple as that. Um, and again, the three major things I wanted to touch on were the way it was tested was with fasted people, which is not practical for most people. Secondly, it didn't it, it didn't account for other foods that are consumed with those carbohydrates. And again, if there's um food in your stomach that also goes to number two and then lastly it doesn't consider portion size so it's just another way that um foods are being kind of uh, misinterpreted by a whole bunch of people that simply just don't know what they're talking about or don't know how to apply the science so that's a uh, that's it for the video guys i'll probably have some more uh videos coming soon i'm trying to get up more information but uh, lifting for life's taking a lot of good information so i'll try to uh come out with some some simple but yet uh useful information that most people can use if you guys have any you know, questions or comments about glycemic index or anything like that, make sure to uh, comment below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that if you like my content, and I'll see you guys next time.